Chapter 6 Mary Mary woke at the sound of boots crossing the floor, and she grasped her blanket tighter. Had one of the men entered her room by mistake? Her heart pounded in her ears, but she kept her eyes tightly closed. Perhaps if she appeared asleep, they would move to another room. The boots moved across the floor, but instead of coming closer to her, Mary heard the sound of a door open and close. She breathed a sigh of relief and opened her eyes, but the room wasn't her own. Then she remembered that she wasn't in the saloon, but in Elizabeth's living room and Carl had probably just left the cabin. Though she knew he hadn't seen her, she still didn't feel comfortable with this solution. She pushed back the covers and dressed quickly. Then she pulled back the sheet and let it fall closed behind her. Elizabeth wasn't in the kitchen yet, and Mary wasn't sure if she should start breakfast without her. Thankfully, she didn't have to wait long as the bedroom door opened and Elizabeth stepped out. Oh, you're already awake. Did you sleep all right? I slept as well as I could, but I don't think I can stay here long, Elizabeth. It doesn't feel proper and you and Carl need your space. Elizabeth pressed her lips together. I suppose you're right. There's a widow who owns a house at the edge of town. She's been talking about opening a boarding house. Maybe we can stop in today and see if she's interested. Tears filled Mary's eyes. Thank you, Elizabeth. I really am so grateful for all you've done for me. You're welcome. Now how about some breakfast and then your first reading lesson? You really think you can teach me to read? Mary asked as she followed Elizabeth into the kitchen. Elizabeth flashed her a confident smile. I'm certainly going to try. Though Mary had more questions, she kept them to herself and helped Elizabeth with the biscuits for breakfast. When Carl returned, they took their seats around the table, and Carl prayed once more before they began eating. What do you have planned for the day? Carl asked as they passed the biscuits around. We're heading to the store for a bit. A lot of women were asking for dresses while we were gone, so we're going to visit them all and hopefully get some orders. I'll take Mary with me for a few and then finish the rest on my own while she stays in the store in case more come in. Then we'll cut and pin patterns so I can start sewing tomorrow. Do you need help around the homestead today? Carl chuckled and shook his head. I can always use help around here, but it can wait for a bit. Getting your business profitable is important, too. Elizabeth smiled at him and placed her hand on his arm. Thank you for being so understanding. I'm so glad God brought us together. As Carl placed his hand on Elizabeth's and gazed at her with such love, Mary felt another surge of guilt. She shouldn't be here invading their privacy. They were still newly married, and they deserved their alone time. She hoped this boarding house worked out, because she didn't know what she'd do if it didn't. When breakfast was finished, Carl headed back outside and Elizabeth grabbed the big black book Carl had been reading from the night before and placed it on the table. Mary's eyes widened at the size of the book. You want me to read that? Well, not in one day, Elizabeth said with a laugh. The Bible is meant to be read in small chunks. Some parts are definitely harder to read than others, so we're going to start with one of the easier books. This is the book of Mark. See, here at the top, M-A-R-K spells Mark. Mary took the heavy book in her hands. The cover was made of a soft leather, but the pages inside were thin and light. She wondered how she would ever be able to read the whole thing. M. She traced the letter with her finger. Though she wouldn't have been able to describe it, she supposed it looked like what she thought it would. Then the A, but when she got to the R, she paused. This didn't look anything like she'd imagined. Her eyes scanned the rest of the page, 
And while she could pick out other M's, A's, R's, and K's, the letters were like a C. She had no idea how to navigate them as they made no sense to her. I don't know, Elizabeth, she said with a heavy sigh. I see the letters, but I don't know how to put them together to make words. It's okay. We'll start easy. Elizabeth took the book back and placed her finger on the first line. I'll read the line word by word, and you try to remember what certain words look like. Mary nodded, but she didn't know how successful she would be. Chapter 1 Chapter is a longer word, but a good one to look at because it's going to appear over and over throughout the Bible, Elizabeth said. Chapter, Mary repeated as she looked at the word. Do a C and an H together always make a ch sound? Elizabeth's face scrunched in thought. I believe so. I can't think of a word when they don't. Okay, the next word is the. That's another word to memorize, as you'll see it a lot. And it doesn't sound like it looks. This word is beginning. That's a harder word, but you won't use it often. Then we have of. And do you recognize the next word? Mary looked at the word above Elizabeth's fingers. T-H-E. She scanned back over what Elizabeth had read, and there it was at the beginning. But how had she pronounced it? The? Mary asked tentatively. A large smile broke out on Elizabeth's face. Yes, the, you caught it. Okay, so far we have the beginning of the. The next word is gospel, which you'll see used often in the Bible. Then we have of again. And then, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now you try. Just read these words again. Mary did as Elizabeth asked, stumbling only slightly on some of the words. That's it. You're getting it all ready. I'll keep reading. As Elizabeth continued, Mary tried to guess the words before Elizabeth said them. She didn't get many right, but she was proud of herself when she recognized the of, and a few others. When Elizabeth reached the end of the chapter, she looked up at Mary. Now, can you tell me what we read? Heat flamed across Mary's cheeks and she averted her gaze. I'm sorry, I was paying such attention to the words themselves that I wasn't listening to the story. That's okay, it's hard to learn to do both. This chapter is one telling about Jesus, It starts off speaking of John, who was actually Jesus' cousin, and how he preached first, preparing a way for Jesus. Then we see Jesus picking his disciples and asking them to follow him, and finally we see him performing some of his miracles. Do you really believe he performed miracles? Mary asked. I do, Elizabeth answered. Don't you think it's a miracle we're both here and away from Luther and Jacob? Mary opened her mouth and then closed it, words failing her for a moment. After a few seconds of thought, she tried again. I guess I never thought about it that way. I assumed you were talking about big miracles, like bringing someone back from the dead. He did that once, didn't he? Mary didn't know many stories from the Bible, but she was certain she'd heard one along those lines though it had been a long time ago. More than once, Elizabeth said with a smile. He also fed hundreds with just a few loaves of bread and some fish, and he healed people of their ailments. Lame men walked, lepers were healed. He did such amazing things. So how come he doesn't do big miracles anymore? Mary asked. She thought back to her childhood. How come he hadn't stopped her mother from beating her, or given her father courage to stand up for her, or protected her from falling prey to Jacob's charming words? How had he just watched her suffer and done nothing about it? I don't know that he doesn't, Elizabeth said slowly, but I think I understand your question. First, we have to remember that the world is much bigger now, 
When the Bible was written, most of those miracles were performed in a much smaller area. So it's possible there are still miracles like that happening, but in a different place. Second, Jesus performed most of the miracles, and after his resurrection, he returned to heaven, so he isn't here in a human body to perform the miracles anymore. But he will return one day, and I'm sure our pastor could do a much better job answering questions than I can. Mary shook her head. She didn't know the pastor, but she didn't think she'd have the courage to ask a man these questions. Nor was she sure it was proper. If you want, I can ask Carl to ask him, and then he can tell us what the pastor says. Elizabeth said, as if reading Mary's mind. Only if you think he'd be amenable. I don't want to overstep. Elizabeth placed a hand on Mary's arm. It's not overstepping. It's growing your faith, and I think he'd be happy to help you do that. For now, though, we better head into town. We need to visit the women who requested dresses while I was gone and stop in to see Mrs. Nelson. She closed the book and returned it to a small table that sat against the wall. Mary helped Elizabeth wash the breakfast dishes, and then they hitched up the wagon to head into town. As Elizabeth drove, Mary scanned the landscape around them. Most of it was flat and brown, but there were patches of thick underbrush that Mary imagined you could get lost in. Just as they reached the edge of town, Elizabeth pulled on the reins and stopped the horse in front of a white house with green shutters. It was larger than Elizabeth's house, but still not as large as some of the houses back in Chicago. This is Mrs. Nelson's house, Elizabeth said as she climbed down. Let's see if she can help us. Mary followed Elizabeth up to the house. A wooden porch ran across the front of the house, and two rocking chairs sat to the right of the door. Elizabeth knocked at the bright green door and then stepped back. A moment later, the door opened, and a small woman with white hair looked up at them. Can I help you? she asked. I hope so, Mrs. Nelson. My name is Elizabeth Baxter, and this is my friend Mary Lockwood. I heard around town that you were thinking of opening up your unused rooms for boarders, and I was wondering if Mary could be your first boarder. I'd love for her to stay with Carl and me, but we only have the one room currently, and though we sectioned off an area in the living room for her, it's not a long-term solution. Mrs. Nelson appraised Mary like an item at a sale before stepping back and beckoning them into the house. Come in and we'll chat to see if you're a fit. Mary followed the woman inside with Elizabeth right behind her. Mrs. Nelson led them to a small parlor and motioned for them to sit on the couch. Then she eased herself down into the closest chair. So, Miss Lockwood, tell me where you're from and how long you expect to need a place to stay. Mary glanced at Elizabeth, unsure of how much to share but Elizabeth just nodded as if telling her to go ahead. I'm from Chicago, and I don't know how long I'll need a room, until I can save up enough for my own home, I suppose. Or until one of our single men sweeps her off her feet, Elizabeth said with a smile. Mary will be helping me in my dress shop, so she'll get paid, but I'm not sure when, as we're still getting started. I can help around the house, though. Mary said quickly. I'm happy to cook, clean, or run errands for you. Mrs. Nelson said nothing for a moment as she looked from Mary to Elizabeth and back again. You're not running from the law or a dangerous man, are you? Mary shook her head. Mrs. Nelson narrowed her eyes. I don't allow men in the house beyond the parlor. Guests need to be approved before they show up and you're responsible for cooking four suppers a week. Of course, Mary said quickly. Before you decide, let me show you the room. It isn't much, and I don't want to hear you complaining after agreeing. No, ma'am, Mary said. She didn't really care what the room looked like. It would be hers, and it would give Elizabeth and Carl their space back. But she followed the woman anyway. Mrs. Nelson opened the door to a small room that contained only a bed, 
a chest of drawers, and a washstand. But it was enough for Mary. It's perfect, but what about payment? Mrs. Nelson looked at Elizabeth this time. I'll take help around the house as payment for the first two weeks. After that, it's two dollars a week. Will that give you time to get your business up and running? I believe so, Elizabeth said, and I'm happy to offer you a dress as payment if necessary. Not sure who I would dress up for, but we can discuss that if the need arises, Mrs. Nelson said. Then she turned back to Mary. There's an outhouse out back and a chamber pot in your room for at night that must be emptied every morning. Yes, ma'am. The front door locks promptly at sunset, and I don't open it after that, so don't be late, the woman said. Thank you, I won't be. As they left Mrs. Nelson's house, Mary smiled with relief. Perhaps this new life in Sage Creek would work out after all.